we've all had ideas that seemed ingenious at the time, but ended up not working exactly as we planned. But sometimes a truly strange idea can work out just perfectly, and that is always oh so satisfying to see. We will show you some bizarre ideas that just so happen to be the ideal solution. What would really be crazy would be missing out on the latest from the riches, so go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications for our channel. Mayonnaise Power when it comes to problems that need solutions, having 1,250 pounds of spoiled mayonnaise is both an unusual and oddly intriguing problem to have. It's an issue that Michigan State University had to contend with when freezing temperatures compromised their 500 containers of mayonnaise, each holding two and a half gallons. Students began complaining about the mayonnaise and inexplicably the school tried to pass off the mayo to the local food bank, who wisely turned it down. Rather than throwing it away, the school sustainability officer Carl Yancidi decided to make the best of a bad situation by making some energy out of some bad mayonnaise. That's right, he poured all of that mayo into the school's anaerobic digester. This device was used to power some farms near the campus. Once the mayo was poured inside, microorganisms fed on it and produced biogas, which can be turned into heat and electricity. Since the microorganisms are fans of sugar and fat, Yancidi figured they would love to have over a thousand gallons of mayo. Dumping the mayo into the anaerobic digester was no easy task, as it took 12 volunteers hours to pour it all. Fellow sustainability officer Cole Good called it a perfect situation to turn what could have been a catastrophe into something positive. Half.com the town of Halfway is a remarkably small town located in Baker County, Oregon. The population of the town is just under 300 people, so it's not exactly a bustling metropolis or a place that people who don't live there would even take note of. But one website called Half.com did take notice. This website was an e-commerce startup back in 1999 and had the bizarre idea of convincing Halfway to change its name to Half.com. The town created and posted two signs at its borders that proclaimed claim the new half.com, America's first dot-com city. As far as advertising strategies go, taking over the name of a tiny town is as out there as halfway itself. For its part of the deal, the town agreed to call itself half.com for a year and received $110,000, 20 new computers for its schools, and other financial subsidies. According to Joshua Kopelman, CEO of Half.com, this actually worked out really well for them, earning them an unprecedented level of attention and publicity. In fact, in addition to literally getting themselves on the map, they were also acquired by eBay for a cool $300 million. Love watching your videos but looking for a more ad-free browsing experience? Take your video viewing to the next level and sign up for the premium network. You'll get the first peek at the newest content from not only The Riches, but Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many more. Thousands of your favorite videos in one place is a no-brainer. Click here to be the first in line for the premium. App it seems like nowadays there is an app for everything under the sun. A man named Joel Com looked at all the applications out there and realized that there was something missing, an app that makes fart noises. Yes, we are talking about the iFart. For just 99 cents, you can have an app that makes fart noises. You can either make a fart noise manually or use the stealth mode and set it to go off at a certain time. If you are wondering who would pay for that, the answer is an astounding number of people. In just two weeks after the app launched, it had been bought over 100,000 times and was ranked number one on Apple's App Store. When this app was released, it netted Com about $10,000 per day. He claims that he made over $400,000 hundred thousand dollars from the app so far. That is an obscene amount of money for creating an app that does something our bodies do every day for free. I smell a rat. When we think of animals that can be trained to perform tasks for humans, most of us immediately think of dogs. This is because dogs do fill many important roles, such as search and rescue, police dogs, and service dogs. But when it came time to figure out a way to detect landmines, scientists decided not to go with their faithful canine companions, but with rats. Not just any rats either, but giant rats with poor eyesight. It may sound insane, but these African giant pouched rats, also known as Gambian pouched rats, have an extraordinary sense of smell. These two feet long rats can detect the presence of as little as one ounce of TNT. 
These rats are hard at work in Cambodia, where there are an estimated 4 to 6 million landmines or other pieces of unexploded devices. People in Cambodia tend to not be fans of rats, so the idea seemed incredibly strange to them, relying on the same creatures they tried to destroy. But not only do these rats sniff out explosives quickly and accurately, but they're too light to activate the explosives. They learn incredibly quickly, they're easy to transport, and they are inexpensive to acquire. They even work better than dogs in some instances due to their lightweight and the fact that while dogs require a specific handler, these rats are happy to work with anyone who has treats. Snuggies we generally assume that products that are sold in the As Seen on TV section of the store aren't exactly making their creators vast sums of money, especially if their product seems absolutely ridiculous. After all, who would spend money on what is essentially a backwards robe? Not to mention that the product's motto is the blanket with sleeves, which doesn't exactly inspire confidence or sound cutting edge. Not only did Scott Boylan from All Star Products decide to sell such a strange item, but he spent approximately $10 million advertising the Snuggie. This might seem like a poor business decision, but in its first year on the market, over 20 million Snuggies were sold. These backwards robes have generated hundreds of millions of dollars in sales and have been discussed by famous talk show hosts such as Jay Leno and Ellen DeGeneres, further creating buzz about Snuggies. Most of us have laughed at the ridiculous, cheesy Snuggie commercials, but Scott Boylan is laughing all the way to the bank. It's time for our trivia question. When we think of inventions we can't believe anyone purchased, one big one is the pet rock. They were created by Gary Dahl and were sold for $3.95 apiece. Just how how much money did his strange assumption that people would pay for a rock earn him? We'll tell you at the end of the video. Grey Goose if sales of your product are suffering, you could try launching a new ad campaign, offering a promotion, or if you are the makers of Grey Goose Vodka, you could just triple the price of your products. That's right, Sidney Frank, the man behind Grey Goose, decided that his product would sell more if it was considered a high-end product. Instead of changing the formula, he just tripled the price of his product. Shockingly, it actually worked. In order to further promote the idea that his product was high class, he changed the shape of the bottles to be taller and thinner than most other brands. You've heard of top shelf liquors, and this one is literally that, since it's designed to not be able to fit on lower shelves, so bars would be forced to keep it on the top shelf, literally. Frank explained that Grey Goose's major competitor at the time was Absolute Vodka, and he believed if he made his vodka much more expensive, people would be convinced that it was higher quality. Just how well did this strategy work out for Sidney Frank? Well, he managed to sell Grey Goose Vodka to Bacardi for an incredible $2 billion. Preventing Scurvy for most of us, scurvy isn't something we worry about in our day-to-day -day lives, but this fatal condition caused by a vitamin C deficiency was a real problem for sailors at one time. While crossing the Pacific Ocean in 1520, Magellan lost over 80% of his crew to the disease. Needless to say, sea captains at the time were desperate to figure out how to prevent their crews from coming down with it, but sadly they didn't have adequate medical knowledge at the time. Captain James Cook was a British explorer and accomplished captain. Cook was was experimenting with different food and living conditions to try to best reduce the chance of scurvy when he noticed that Spanish ships carrying sauerkraut didn't seem to be afflicted with scurvy. The strange part isn't that Cook began incorporating sauerkraut on his own voyages, but that he decided to trick his crew into eating it. He knew that they would turn up their noses at the pickled cabbage, so he made it an officer's only treat and would eat loads of it with his fellow officers at meals. Soon his crew was begging to be allowed to eat it, and in his endless generosity, Cook allowed them to have some for their own meals. Baggage Claim Humans hate waiting for things, especially in today's world of instant gratification. One airport in Houston, Texas faced quite a customer relations issue at one time. They received a constant deluge of complaints about the long waits at baggage claim. At first, the airport simply arranged for more baggage handlers to work the area, dropping the average wait time to 8 minutes, which is standard at most airports. However, this did nothing to stop the complaints, so the airport had to come up with a new strategy. They analyzed the situation and discovered that baggage claim was located approximately one minute away from the arrival gate, and once passengers reached baggage claim, they waited seven minutes to get their bags. 
Instead of trying to reduce the wait time further, the airport simply moved baggage claims six times further away. This way, total time spent to get bags was the same, but people were more inconvenienced by having to travel further. However, in their minds, they didn't have to wait as long, so the complaints about waiting too long at baggage claim completely ceased. Buddha Not Litter Concerned citizen Dan Stevenson thought it would take an absolute miracle to stop the seemingly endless barrage of graffiti, littering, and other crimes in his Oakland, California neighborhood. Despite not being a Buddhist or even following any sort of organized religion, he installed a two-foot-high stone Buddha on a medium strip. The simple Buddha was purchased from a mystical place known as Ace Hardware, and Stevenson hoped it would bring a little bit of tranquility to the area. Shockingly enough, it actually worked. People of all races and creeds even began began to leave offerings at the statue and meted it for prayers. Since it was installed, crime has dropped by 82%. Robberies, aggravated assaults, burglaries, and more all decreased dramatically in number of occurrences. One would-be thief attempted to steal the Buddha, but thankfully Stevenson had secured him with a reinforced iron bar and some epoxy. A single resident complaint prompted the Public Works Department to threaten its removal, but there was such a savage and immediate outcry from the citizens, they thought better of it. Drought Solution it's no secret that California is experiencing a major drought, so you would think that every drop of water would be precious. Well, people in Los Angeles dropped 96 million 4-inch black plastic balls into their 175-acre reservoir. During the worst drought in the entire history of California, these people turned their reservoir into a giant ball pit under the supervision of their mayor, Eric Garcetti. This was a strange plan of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, who hoped that the balls will shade and cool the water. Not only will this reduce evaporation, but it will also make it less susceptible to algae, bacterial growth, and potentially harmful chemical reactions. Although the balls cost just 36 cents each, there are so many of them that the total cost was $34.5 million. However, these balls will likely pay for themselves, as they reduce evaporation by 85 to 90 percent, equaling 300 million gallons of water saved, enough for 8,100 people to drink. They will also reduce the need for expensive water treatment, saving the city $250 million over time. You may wonder who on earth would pay money for a rock of no special significance, but Gary Dahl sold over 5 million of them in just 6 months, earning him $15 million. Sometimes brilliant ideas don't seem very impressive at the time. These strange ideas were big gambles that really paid off in the long run. If you're more of a fan of the sure thing, be sure to subscribe to The Riches for more great videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.